What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about a V8 engine? Maybe you think speed and power, or maybe you think first about that sound. There's nothing quite like the sound of a V8 engine. Some people hear a hum, some people hear a roar, many hear music. According to Science Focus, there's a reason why the V8 sounds so appealing to people's ears. Cylinders are like wind instruments. During each piston cycle, air is sucked in and then forced out. Each cycle makes a tone. Obviously, this happens with all engines. But the V8 has an irregular firing sequence that gives it a distinctive, pleasing sound. Then there is the speed and power. Humans are obsessed with going fast. The moment one record is broken, people are lining up to try and better it. It's not just psychological either. Driving fast gives us a surge of adrenaline, which causes our blood pressure and heart rate to jump. So there are a lot of reasons why people love the V8 engine. It also evokes nostalgia, particularly in America. The V8 is America's motor. It was adopted in the US more than other parts of the world. It was suited to America's wide open spaces. American manufacturers built some of the first and most influential V8 engines. So why is it dying? And will it ever really be gone completely? V8 engines are mostly only being used to power cars that are too expensive for ordinary people. It seems that the V8 story has come full circle. What do we mean by this? Well, in the beginning, the V8 was an engine in cars only the rich could afford. Then Henry Ford made V8 engines accessible to the general public. We'll talk more about this later, but now it's only the rich who can afford V8s. But why did this happen? Well, there's a lot to do with the way a V8 engine works. Like the name says, a V8 engine is an eight cylinder piston engine where the cylinders are arranged in a V configuration. Like any engine, air is pulled in when the piston moves downwards and compressed when it moves up. Then the spark plug fires, igniting the mixture which forces the piston down. As the piston comes up, it pushes out the exhaust gas. All of the cylinders are connected to a common crankshaft, which converts the up-down motion of the piston into rotary motion. In the V8 engine, each cylinder fires at different times. This makes power delivery very smooth. It's a big advantage of a V8 engine. Another advantage is more combustion is created. This means you get more power. But there are disadvantages as well. More combustion means more gasoline. It also means more emissions. There are also more moving parts, which means more friction and more wasted energy. So V8 engines are smoother and powerful, but less efficient. There are ways to improve power efficiency in a motor. That's how car makers have been able to make four and six cylinder motors that deliver the same performance as a V8. There's also aerodynamics. The more aerodynamic the design, the less resistance, the more efficient. But efficiency can be influenced by other things too. One of these important things is how you drive. Top Gear did this in the test of the Prius four-cylinder hybrid in a number 92 chassis BMW V8. They drove the Prius as fast as they could around the track and the MR just had to keep up. Turned out that the BMW V8 used less fuel than the hybrid, which goes to show how the way a car is driven will affect fuel economy. The question, of course, is whether the people who drive the V8s will be driving in a fuel efficient manner. The answer is probably no. The V8 is about speed and power. It's the reason it was created in the first place. The first known working V8 engine wasn't actually made for a car. It was designed to power an aircraft. Its name was Antoinette. A 39-year-old French engineer named Leon Levavasseur took out a patent for the engine in 1902. The engine was named after the daughter of Levavasseur's financer, Jules Gastembin. It was manufactured in 1904. Its first appearance in a car was in the 1914 Cadillac L-Head engine. Cadillac was led by Henry Leland. Leland is a name you may not have heard, but we must mention it when talking about V8 engines. He founded not one, but two of America's famous luxury car brands, Cadillac and Lincoln. Those brands are both around today, over 100 years later. They're brands that use V8 engines way back then and still today. Cadillac was originally the Henry Ford Company. Henry Leland worked for Henry Ford. When Henry Ford had an argument with his investors, he left the company in 1902. He took many of his key partners with him. Then the following year, he started a new company, the Ford Motor Company. 
Back at the old company, Henry Leland managed to convince investors not to liquidate. Instead, they changed the name of the company to Cadillac. That's why the first 1903 Cadillac is so similar to the original 1903 Ford A model. They were both essentially Henry Ford's designs. It's also why Henry Ford had a lifelong grudge against Henry Leland. Leland built Cadillac into a successful luxury car company. He sold the company to William Durant's General Motors in 1909, but stayed on as an executive. It was during this time that the 1914 V8 Cadillac was produced. Then, during World War I, Leland got a contract to produce V12 motors for the Army. This led to a dispute with William Durant, who was a pacifist. So Leland left the company and started the Lincoln Motor Company. Unfortunately, the government didn't pay for his work and the company went insolvent in the economic downturn of the early 1920s. It was Henry Ford's opportunity for revenge. He purchased Lincoln and had Leland and his son escorted out of the building in 1922. So Ford was building V8s in 1922 for the Lincoln line. He was also looking at an X8 engine. This turned out to be too heavy and complicated and repeatedly failed. He was trying to figure out a way to bring more horsepower to his cars for less money. The X8 engines were just too expensive for ordinary cars, so it was only the rich who could afford to drive cars with V8 engines. This all changed in the early 1930s. By then, the Ford Motor Company was in trouble. Chevrolet had introduced a six-cylinder in 1929. They were also doing a good job marketing and promoting the six-cylinder model at the same price you'd pay for a four-cylinder. So, by 1931, they were outselling Ford. Henry Ford thought it was over for four-cylinder cars. He closed 25 of his 36 plants and laid off 75,000 men. He had a secret operation in Greenfield Village working on an eight-cylinder engine that would be affordable for ordinary cars. Finally, he was successful. The V8 flathead was cast as a single block mold engine. Up until then, V8 engines were made with multiple parts. The single engine reduced the pieces required and the cost in 1932 Ford when they released the first affordable car with a V8 engine. Cars were able to reach speeds of up to 75 miles per hour. But it wasn't just ordinary people who could go faster. The car was also favored among American gangsters. In 1934, Ford received a letter supposedly from Clyde Barrow endorsing the Ford V8. That's Clyde Barrow of Bonnie and Clyde. The V8 took off literally and figuratively after World War II, especially in America. The wider American cars were suited to bigger engines. Muscle cars became synonymous with American culture. But even as far back as the 1940s, there was a hint of the challenges that lay ahead for V8s. The French introduced a tax on horsepower after World War I. That was before many European companies had even brought out their first V8 engine. BMW only made their first V8 in 1965, and then didn't bring out another one until 1992. Then the oil crisis of the 1970s led to tight emission standards in the U.S. In turn, this led to less passenger cars manufactured with V8s. Improvements led to better performances in the four to six cylinder engines. V8s were phased out for more efficient designs. The good news was that the four and six cylinder engines that displaced the V8s in many vehicles generally combine good performance and fuel economy. Let's look at how car makers get more power out of a four or six cylinder engine. First, there's variable valve timing. In an internal combustion engine, air enters the cylinder chamber and exhaust gases exit the cylinder chamber. The opening and closing of the intake and exhaust are controlled by valves. Variable valve timing allows these values to open and close at different rates that are dependent on the speed they're driving. Variable valve controls when they open, how much they open, and for how long they open. Today's cars have sensors monitoring things like airflow and camshaft position. These sensors send information to the variable valve timing, telling it how to behave. Next, fuel injection. Traditionally, the carburetor controlled the mixture of fuel and air that was sent to the cylinders. The problem with this is that it couldn't supply the same amount to all four cylinders as some were further away. Fuel injection improves this process by delivering the fuel in precise bursts, which makes it more economical. Finally, we'll mention turbochargers. A turbocharger forces more air into the cylinders each second. That means they burn fuel more quickly, releasing more power. 
This has enabled four-cylinder engines to meet the power needs of average Americans. You only have to look at this chart to see what it means for a V8 and even the V6 engine. Since 1999, the four-cylinders have grown more and more popular. Fewer and fewer cars are manufactured with V8 engines, and those with V8 engines are very expensive, so only the wealthy can buy them. Even in that space, though, V8s aren't safe from competition. Electric vehicles are quickly coming up to speed. BMW's all-electric i4 is a top speed of 120, while Tesla's updated Roadster is a top speed of 200 miles an hour. At the same time, fuel efficiency requirements are increasing. So even at the top end of the market, V8's days may very well be numbered. But here's something interesting related to sound in EV cars. Recently, governments have issued laws that require car makers to include artificial motor sounds in electric cars. This is only at low speeds. It's to protect pedestrians. Automakers can choose the sounds they use, and some have already selected their sounds. Frank Welsh is responsible for the technical development of Volkswagen. He told Reuters that the electric vehicle sound is its identity. It cannot be too intrusive or annoying. It has to be futuristic and it cannot sound like anything we've heard in the past. We cannot simply add the sound of a combustion engine. I'm not sure I agree with them. I think car makers should give us drivers options to choose from. What sounds we want, what sounds we don't. Just like we can choose the image we have on our desktop or the ringtone we have on our phone. I know what I choose. I choose a 2013 Shelby Cobra GT500 V8 Rumble. That way, when the V8s are gone, the spirit can still live on in sound. What do you think? We'd love to hear your comments. If you like our video, subscribe to our channel and ring that bell to get notified of our next episode.